Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, Rachel, for the introduction. Uh, my name is Aphrodite Kanelopoulou. I'm a methods, uh, I'm a statistics editor in the Method Support Unit, and I'm going to give you a, a first sort of the structure of the current session. Uh, we're going to have a small introduction and present you the definition of heterogeneity. Uh, we're going to present you then uh, some ways of identifying a statistical heterogeneity uh, in a systematic review. Uh, we're going to present then some ways of dealing uh, with heterogeneity and some common misconceptions we can see in the literature surrounding heterogeneity. And finally, we're going to have a small discussion and uh, we're going, of course, to answer to any of your questions. Um, okay, so uh, first, uh, uh, after uh, completing our uh, literature search, uh, the data extraction and the data verification, uh, we are ready to do the meta-analysis. Our next step is meta-analysis, which is the statistical combination of the results from all the studies we identified through our, our literature search. So meta-analysis usually is a two-stage process. Uh, usually uh, during the first stage, we obtain the effect size estimate from each study and its corresponding standard error. And during the second stage, we synthesize all the effect sizes from the included studies. So usually studies that are brought together in a systematic review will differ. They will differ clinically that means that we have differences in the PICO criteria and they will differ methodologically. So in practice, actually, it is almost impossible to have the same effect across all studies. So this is where the term heterogeneity is introduced. And before we give the exact definition of heterogeneity, I'd like you to know what do you think is uh, heterogeneity? So, um, I'd like you to ask, uh, I'd like you to uh, answer to this poll uh, in which we'd like you to answer uh, to this question. What is heterogeneity? Is something that uh, we need to be afraid of? Option one, option two is heterogeneity is any difference between studies included in a systematic review. Heterogeneity, option three, heterogeneity is a quantity that can be measured using statistic measures. Or option four, heterogeneity is a criterion for, criterion for choosing between fixed and random effects model. So I'll give you a couple of minutes to answer to this poll. Okay, we've, uh, we're sharing the results. Okay. So, can we see the results? Yeah, yeah, everyone can see the results. Can you see them, uh, Aphrodite? Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, 77% uh, of you uh, answered that heterogeneity is any difference between studies included in a systematic review. So um, this is actually the definition we're looking for. And this is the definition of um, heterogeneity. And heterogeneity is actually any kind of variability among studies included in a systematic review. And by saying uh, variability, we mean that we might have differences in uh, clinical aspects of the studies, such as participants, interventions, and outcomes. We might have methodological differences, such as uh, study design, outcome measurement tools, and risk of bias. And of course, we have the statistical heterogeneity, which is the variability in intervention effects of the different studies. Usually, statistical heterogeneity might be a consequence of the clinical and the methodological variability across studies. But we do know that statistical heterogeneity exists because we have variation 
in the true effects underlying the studies. So the, the assumption of homogeneity does not hold. Okay, so now that we know what heterogeneity is, let's see what statistics have proposed in order to take into account heterogeneity in our, in our analysis. So the two most popular meta-analytic models are the fixed and the random effects models. The fixed effects model or common effects model is a statistical model that actually ignores heterogeneity, even if it is present in our analysis because it assumes that the observed differences among study results are solely due to chance. On the other hand, random effects model incorporates heterogeneity among studies because now we, uh, we assume that the observed differences among study results are due to a combination of chance and variation in the intervention effects. So in a, a perfect scenario where we do not have any heterogeneity in our analysis, we expect that the fixed effects and the random effects models will give identical results. That means that the summary effect estimates will be close as well as their corresponding standard errors. But in most of the cases, we do have heterogeneity. So the summary effect estimates that come from those two models might be different. And usually the confidence interval around the random effect summary estimate is wider than a confidence interval around the fixed effects summary estimate. And that's why we say that uh, the random effects model is a more conservative option compared to the fixed effects model. So before doing any analysis, the basic question that we need to answer is how will we know if there is statistical heterogeneity? And is there any way that maybe we can assess its magnitude? And we're referring specifically to statistical heterogeneity because usually clinical and methodological variability heterogeneity can be assessed by checking closely the studies characteristics, the individual studies characteristics. So some of the ways that have been proposed to identify statistical heterogeneity are visual inspection of the forest plots, the use of the quasi-square test and the use of the I-square index. So the first option is to visually inspect the forest plots. So by saying visual inspection, we mean, we mean that we need to check the direction of the individual studies effect estimates, and we need to check for any overlap on confidence intervals. So here we have three different forest plots. So in our first forest plot, as you can see, we do not have any differences in the direction of effects. Plus, we do have overlap in all of the confidence intervals. So we are guessing that in this analysis, uh, we do not have any statistical heterogeneity. But on the other hand, if we look at forest plot, at the second forest plot, we do see that we have differences uh, significant differences in the direction of effects. Some of the studies provided evidence that we have a protective effect, while others provided evidence that we have an aggravating effect. And we also see that some of the confidence intervals do not overlap. So we guess that in this analysis, we have substantial heterogeneity. By looking at forest plot C, uh, this is a bit trickier example. So in this case, we might need you to answer to this question. What do you think about heterogeneity in forest plot C? Do you think uh, this uh, heterogeneity is not important? Do you think it is moderate or substantial? Okay, I'm ending the poll and sharing the results. Okay, so 73% of you uh, answered that heterogeneity is moderate, which is correct. And we will see why in our next slide. 
Okay, so uh, the second way of identifying statistical heterogeneity is by using a chi-square test, which is none other than the Q-statistic. Q-statistic is a statistical test, which assesses whether observed differences in results are compatible with chance alone. We have two hypotheses. The null hypothesis is that there is no between studies heterogeneity, and the alternative hypothesis is that we do have between studies heterogeneity. Uh, the Q statistic will provide a statistically significant finding when the corresponding p value is lower than 0.10. However, we need to pay attention to some details. Usually, this statistical test is low powered. Uh, because studies included in meta-analysis most of the times have small sample sizes or are few in number. And this statistics, this statistical test requires high power to detect even a small amount of heterogeneity in presence of, of many studies. So let's see an example of how we can interpret the chi-square test. Uh, here is the forest plot C we saw earlier in the poll. We have 14 studies and we have conducted uh, a random effects. Uh, we have performed a meta-analysis using a random effects model. And we have calculated uh, the heterogeneity estimate. So the chi-squared uh, test equals 41.4, and the corresponding p-value is lower than 0 0.01, which means is lower than 0 0.10. So we have evidence that we have a statistically significant between studies heterogeneity. Although uh, Q-test might uh, give us, provide us some evidence of uh, uh, the presence of statistical heterogeneity across studies, it cannot give us any information regarding its magnitude. So a few years ago, Julian Higgins proposed the I-square index, which is an index that quantifies the percentage of the variability in effect estimates that is due to heterogeneity rather than chance. Uh, also, uh, Julian Higgins provided a rough guide for interpreting the I square values, which can be found, uh, which can be found uh, at the conference handbook. And so, uh, in case we have an I square between zero to forty, uh, then we can say that heterogeneity is not important. If I square is between thirty to sixty percent, then we have moderate heterogeneity. Uh, if I square is between 50 and 90%, then we have substantial heterogeneity. And finally, if I square is between 75 and 100%, then we can say that we have considerable heterogeneity. Um, as you can see, these thresholds overlap. So this is why this is one of the reasons why researchers struggle with interpreting I square values. So even though I square gives us uh, a picture of the percentage of variability, uh, the interpretation of I, of I square value alone is not enough. We need to check the magnitude and the direction of the individual effect uh, estimates, and we need uh, to know the strength of evidence for heterogeneity. So, Let's go back to our previous example and see what is going on here. Uh, we have also calculated here the I square, which is equal to 59%. So forest plot C has an I square of 59, and 59 can be interpreted as either moderate or substantial heterogeneity. In order to decide what is going on here, uh, a visual inspection of the forest plot will be helpful. Um, so by looking at the force plot and the individual studies, we can see that smaller studies tend to give uh, um, a protective or a null effect, while larger studies give uh, an effect estimates that is more close to one. We do not see any substantial differences between effect estimates. We do have differences, of course, but these are not substantial. And then we check the corresponding confidence intervals. In general, we can say that the confidence intervals overlap, except from two to three studies, which uh, in which we can see that the confidence intervals do not overlap. 
So we might say that, yeah, there are differences here between studies, but these are not substantial. So we lean towards saying that this analysis uh, is characterized by moderate heterogeneity. So um, the general advice here is to uh, interpret the I square value, but this is not enough in your analysis. You need to check the direction of effects, the confidence intervals, and of course, check for any clinical or methodological differences uh, across studies that are included in the systematic review.